In this video, we need to know how to rationalize denominators when they have binomials in the denominator. Here's something that does not work. A lot of times, people will see the radical in the denominator next to another term, and they'll assume that if they multiply by the square root of 3 in the numerator and denominator that they'll be able to rationalize it. Notice that if you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3, you have to distribute that radical or that square root of 3 to both terms, which gives you the 2 square root of 3 plus square root of 3 squared, or 9, and root 3 in the numerator. You were not able to reduce this because you still have 2 root 3. It does not work. You have to multiply by the conjugate. So don't even try to do it that way. It will just be confusing. What you have to do is recall that a binomial times its conjugate, and remember the conjugate is something identical, it's a binomial that's identical except for the sign, notice this one's negative, will give you something where you can multiply the first and the last terms together, and they'll reduce to a number or simplify to a number. So you'll have 4 minus the square root of 9, which is 3. That's equal to 1. So remember, whenever you need to rationalize a binomial denominator, you multiply by the conjugate. Let's try this in example one. Notice that we have a binomial in the denominator. As you may recall, a binomial has two terms. The terms here are five and negative root three. Now that we've noticed that it's a binomial, we need to know how to multiply to get rid of the radical. As you may recall, when we multiply by the conjugate, we can clear out all radical signs and just have numbers, as we did right here. So the opposite, or the conjugate, for 5 minus the square root of 3 will give me 5 plus the square root of 3. Now that I've determined what the conjugate is, I'll know exactly what to put in my numerator because it's exactly the same as what I put in the denominator. That way, it's like multiplying my fraction by a funny looking one. Once I've figured out what to multiply the numerator and denominator by to rationalize the denominator, I can now distribute the 6 through to each term in the numerator to get 30 plus 6 root 3. In the denominator, I can remember that multiplying the first terms together and the last terms together will give me all the pieces I need because remember when you multiply conjugates, the middle terms always add to 0. So 5 times 5 is 25 and the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 will give me minus 9. Excuse me, minus 3. Mm -hmm. 
Now I can simplify that further. 25 minus 3 is 22. And in the numerator, I get 30 plus 6 root 3. There's a common factor of 6 in the numerator, so I get 5 plus root 3, and in the denominator, 22. A common factor of 2 divides out, and I get 11 and 3. So my final answer is 3 times 5 plus root 3, all over 11. In example 2, we're again going to multiply by the conjugate in both the numerator and the denominator to clear the radicals. Since 4 plus 2 root 2 is two terms, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 4 minus 2 root 2. And in the numerator, the same thing has to happen, so it's like multiplying by a funny looking 1. Now that I've done that, I can multiply through and I get FOIL happening in the numerator. 12 minus 6 root 2 minus 20 root 2 plus 10 times 2 all over the first and the last multiplied together, which is 16 minus 2 times 2 root 2 squared. Simplifying further, we can add these two terms together, which is 12 minus 26 root 2 plus 20, all over 16 minus 4 times 2, which is 8. From here, we can simplify the numerator by adding 12 and 20 together to get 32 minus 26 root 2 all over 16 minus 8, which is 8. From here, our common factor in the numerator is a 2, and we have 16 minus 13 root 2 left, all over 8. Reduce out the common factor of 2, gives us 4 in the denominator. Finally, we can rewrite the whole reduced fraction as 16 minus 13 root 2 all over 4. And that is its most simplified form, with no radical in the denominator.